with his dad. I, I just couldn't, couldn't take it when he passed. I was there when he passed. And he always told me that before I go, I will give you something. I never asked him what it was. But I always remember that he said that. And I got the call that he wasn't going to go much further. Uh, was it Kingsbrook County Hospital in Brooklyn? If you want to see your friend, get there and see him. And for some unknown reason to this day, I grabbed a tape player which belonged to one of my kids. I didn't even know how to use it. And I put it drop and told my sweetie there, let's go, we're going to see my friend. And we got to the hospital and we got to the room, the doorway, and Mike and the rest of the family were there. And he was in the room, went to bed, and he said, Slim, my friend, come to me. And I went to him and I leaned over. Again, why, I don't know, but I pushed the button on the player. He said, I always promised you I would give you something. And he talked into the recorder. And shortly thereafter, he died. <clears throat> no one's ever heard of me. Kids answered, a plumber, a carpenter, an accountant, whatever. They asked, 
And I said, my dad bends nails and bites chains. <laughs> so the teacher sent a note home. Your son's been reading too many comic books. Take the fantasy out of his head, bring him back into the real world. Well, the next day, my dad came to school with me. <laughs> Took a chain out of his pocket, put it in his mouth, flicked down, the chain fell, he spat the link out, he put it on the desk, and he said to the teacher, he says, when my son tells you something, believe him. <laughs> That's a story that I, I will always remember. And another thing, I don't mean to say anything that Dennis did not uh, speak about, but my dad never had a max. He did the best and the most that he could do every time he came up. If there was something that he thought he couldn't do, he wouldn't try it. But if he decided that he was going to do it, he did it. And that was it. He did it. When he was in vaudeville, it's a story I remember, and I was too young, I wasn't born as a matter of fact. Somebody brought a chain to him to break across his back. It was one of these thick railroad chains. He worked for eight hours. The audience had long left the theater. He broke that chain after eight hours of stretching it across his back until he fell into the, the orchestra pit finally doing it. But he broke that chain. His back was torn to ribbons, but he broke that chain. That was the mighty effort. Now, there's just one more thing I would like to tell that should be told. The strong one in my family was my mom. Her strength of character is what brought us all here. She took care of and raised ten children, eleven if you include my dad. <laughs> and somewhere there should be a hall of fame to recognize and respect the women behind the men who make these achievements. I've always felt that she never got the recognition she should, and today I would like to tell you as a tribute to my mom. She was largely responsible for my dad's feats and the reason we're all here. Your barbell is proud to present to Jerry and Mike Greenstein. Uh, we post, I, I don't know how to say it's right, who throw all of us whatever recognized. Jerry Greenstein, the mighty Adam. That's it, he got it. I'm not good at that stuff. I apologize. Uh, the mighty Adam, Joe Greenstein, for his incredible feats of strength and pioneership of strongmanism. We officially induct him into our Hall of Fame on this day, May 21st, 2011. For, for the last part of our induction ceremony, this brings it back to a little bit of the flavor of what the event's really, you know, we're heading to with the event and what we're trying to support is our military. Right now, I'd like Scott Adams to come up and tell you a little bit about his uh, his experiences in the military, and uh, we'll get going back with the rest of the, the after. The